Welcome everyone to the Aperio Teaching and Learning meeting. It's Wednesday, May 3rd. My name is Neil Caden. I'm one of the co-facilitators along with uh, Trisha Gordon and Matt Burgess from, uh, both of them are from University of Virginia. Uh, today we have a full agenda uh, of possibilities. Um, we have our usual welcome, which is now, so welcome and thank you for joining. Uh, the session is being recorded. Um, we'll have project updates and announcements. Uh, and then the main highlight is a presentation by Adam Marshall, Marshall of Oxford on additions to the lessons tool in Sakai 12. Uh, Laura Geckler said that if there's time, Notre Dame also has some contributions recently to the gradebook she'd like to show off and maybe get some feedback on. Um, and then we'll take some time for questions, discussion, and uh, potentially planning for uh, any future topics that we might want for additional meetings. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with uh, any announcements. And feel free to throw things up on the, uh, on the etherpad. So Laura, why don't you start since uh, you uh, have some special announcements this morning, or at least one. Good day, y'all. <laughs> uh, I had a brainstorm yesterday on the way into work, and so I just made it happen. Uh, sent a, a bunch of emails to all the lists, um, but it's the global tweet heard around the world. And um, those of us who have Twitter accounts are signing up on a Google Doc to send the same tweet, actually retweet it, uh, at uh, for 24 hours around the globe and around the clock. Now, Johnson University is finally being put on the map because Dave Eveland has signed up for 611 of those 24 slots, but um, don't let him outdo you and just stick your name in the Google sheet right next to his and, um, and hopefully we'll have representation from every single time zone around the globe because Aperio is global, so why not? Oh, and Dave says, feel free to change it, anybody, if you um, absolutely want to leave him off. Now, I don't have screen sharing capabilities here, but um, Neil, do you have the sign up spreadsheet uh, tab open? I see you have. 47 tabs open. Maybe that's one of them. Well, actually, you're oh, seeing Adam Marshall's uh, screen because he's the present, you know, main presenter. So he wanted to make sure that his screen sharing was working properly before getting started. So we did a oh, little prep sure, there. Sure. Um, but Adam, I think that Dave Dave Eveland has uh, shared the link in the chat, which um, we can also paste into the Etherpad. Yeah. So we'll do that. I'll okay, paste it into I'm the Etherpad right on. Right around your, oh, there, somebody's already pasted it in. I don't know why it's called okay. tweet. It's not really a tweet deck sign up. It's a Twitter sign up thing. You don't have, Thanks, doesn't matter Adam, which tool, yeah. doesn't matter which tool you use. Oh, right. It doesn't, um, you know, and if you're, um, if your spot in the, in the world, um, uh, you're not available at a certain time, you, you know, you can always schedule it, but hopefully we'll get representation from, uh, every time zone. Yeah, and I'll just give a little little uh, hint as well of something that several of us use, something called Buffer.com, which allows you to schedule tweets, which is incredibly handy. And, um, Me so, too. Yeah, and it's free if you're just if you just do a few t tweets here and there, it's free. If you do like massive massive amounts of tweets, then it can cost money. But um, you want to check it out. Oh, and TweetDeck also lets you schedule tweets. That's cool. Yeah, I think some a number of different uh, Twitter tools these days also allow you to schedule tweets. So there's a number of different ways to do it, which is a much, that way when you sign up for something and you and you put a tweet out there, you can just get it done out of the way and not have to worry about it. It's a much better way to do it, I think. Um, right, so uh, the tweet that um, gets retweeted, I guess I'm starting it off at 8 p.m. If you can see the tweet from 8 p.m. then, just go ahead and uh, uh, retweet that at your time slot. And uh, of course you're, also can do any other tweets you want to. Ha, Neil, thanks so much. And thank you, Adam, for displaying the screen. Uh, that's the only announcement I have today. Okay, great, thanks, Laura. So um, I also mentioned that if time's permitting that uh, you have 
uh, may want to do screen sharing and show off uh, Gradebook NG uh, feature that Notre Dame's contributed that you want feedback on. We'll just see how the time time works. The timing works out. Um, yeah, I'm all queued up if the if it's possible. But if not, I I totally want to give give the show to Adam because we're very eager to see what Oxford's doing with lessons. So uh, thank you. So for other other announcements, and again, feel free uh, to chime in, put something in the chat or on the agenda. I just throw it on there if you think of an announcement. Some uh, one announcement. I got a couple. Um, one is that we have the modernized forums tool. We had put out a, a, a request for people who are interested in that. Got a really good response. I think 13 to 16 people, something like that. We then used a doodle poll and scheduled the time that worked. Nothing, of course, worked for everybody, which is um, a shame, but. Uh, it's going to be Wednesday at 10 a. Uh, next Wednesday, week from today at 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'll send out an announcement to, I guess, the Sakai uh, users list and dev list, and so that other people who want to join, if you're available, are welcome to. Uh, and that's that's a farm effort, a Perio farm funding and resource model uh, that we got. That forms tool, Sakai forms tool, got the number one set of votes in terms of an area that the community would like to see improved. And so this is an initial way to get the community together, see if there's people willing to kind of step up and, and take some some responsibility to convene meetings and get things going and see if we can figure out what direction the group wants to go in. And then once that happens, maybe there can be some resource sharing, fundraising, and so forth to, to work on the forums tool. So that's kind of what that that is about. Um, an update on Sakai 11.4. Sakai 11.4 is looking really good. Um, it's looking very promising for an RCO1, which is our first release candidate by the end of this week. If we get that out by the end of this week, which like I said at the moment, is looking really good. I think we have one issue that there's some debate about whether it's a blocker or not, but we're really hoping to get it just fixed and in so we don't have to worry about whether we'll consider it a blocker for the release. It's kind of an iffy uh, because it's something that ex uh, exists in older issues, but older um, versions of Sakai, but still seems like really important to get fixed. So very likely we'll have an 11.4 RCO1 and start some QA testing next week. We'll probably have a couple of weeks of QA testing on RCO1, or hopefully if there, we don't find any issues, that will become the, the uh, the release, if we do find issues, then we'll need an RCO2 and start another round of testing. So if you're interested in being involved in testing, please um, let me know or the QA group know or the QA planning group. Uh, we could definitely use some help. Uh, and 11.4 has some really, really nice fixes in it. Uh, I didn't really summarize them, so I don't want to take up too much time and go looking and figuring that out. But uh, we do have a number of uh, really good fixes in, in 12 and some uh, nice interface, a few uh, interface updates as well. Um, Sakai 12, we're still on track to do a branch uh, around Open Aperio. So you'll hear, be hearing more about that, I think, around Open Aperio time. Uh, but we're still looking at roughly that schedule of uh, branching, creating a Sakai 12 branch around Open Aperio around early June, and then uh, targeting, I think, uh, late September for uh, 11 for a 12.0. Um, so that's the deal on releases. Um, we also had farm lightning talks recently. I'll, I can put that if you go to uh, YouTube and look for the Aperio channel, there's an Aperio lightning talks channel. So if you want to review, if you didn't get a chance to attend, that's up on lightning talks uh, channel there, recorded video. Um, of course, Open Aperio is coming up. So please register. The early bird ends uh, this Friday. Um, so please do that as soon as you can. If you're coming, we hope everyone or as many of you as possible are coming. And I was going to see if Matt Clare was on the call here, but he doesn't appear to be. Uh, I just thought it might be interesting to have an accessibility update because I think we're still kind of uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's on some contributions that um, different institutions are coming up with. But I just say that it looking really promising, um, you know, making really good progress on the accessibility front on the Raleigh project, but um, may take a little more uh, clarification with some of the contributions and figuring out how it's all going to fit together to figure out an exact timeline for the uh, WCAG um, level two uh, uh, target that we're going for. But I'm I'm at least somewhat optimistic or cautiously optimistic on on the way that's going. It's pretty pretty exciting. Schools keep popping up and and making different kinds of contributions to the cause. So um, I don't think I have any um, other 
uh, announcements. I mentioned Open Aperio. Um, there's a link in. That was from last week. I just copied and pasted the notes. And so people who missed last week, there's a link to some new NYU skin issue, skin um, improvements, which are going into 12, um, Sakai 12. And that's it. Anyone have any questions or have any additional announcements before we head on to the main topic of our symposium today? Okay, well, it doesn't sound like anyone has any questions or additional announcements. Um, so we will hand the reins over to you, Adam, and uh, feel free to uh, take it away with a little introduction about uh, yourself. I think most people on the call know you, but it never hurts to reintroduce and uh, and then get started. Uh, hi, yeah, thanks, Neil. Uh, just um, somebody say something if you can't hear me or type something in the box. Uh, I guess if you can't hear me, you won't know I'm asking that. But um, yeah, so I'm uh, Adam Marshall. I run the Sakai service at uh, Oxford University, and um, we call it WebLearn. So. When I talk about WebLearn, uh, I'm talking about Sakai. So we've made, um, over the years, quite a few changes. Um, and uh, in the past, we maybe haven't been so good at getting them committed back to Sakai. So we've got a bit of a backlog. But uh, two or three, possibly four years ago, we realized the error of our ways. So now, whenever we develop anything, we generally develop it in Sakai first and then bring it back and um, sort of um, patch it over WebLearn. So hopefully, going forward, um, uh, most of our changes are going to be um, available to the community. So um, I was going to talk primarily about what we've done to the lessons tool. And all these things I'm going to show you, as you will see in the main, are in, um, or will be in Sakai 12. But um, there's one thing that's disabled by default in um, Sakai 12. Uh, so I'll show you that. Uh, in WebLearn instead. The reason it's disabled, it's it's like a Twitter um, uh, feed that goes in the lessons pages and you have to have uh, like a security key in the properties file and has to be tied up to an account and so on and so forth. So it's not really appropriate to have it um, on the nightly build, but uh, it's simply a case of uh, enabling it and then putting in your um, credentials um, wherever it is in the properties file, I guess. So, um, let me, I'll show you that one first actually. So let's just go over to WebLearn. Um, and I, I got um, a blank lessons tool here. So this is this is um, Sakai 11 with a few changes. Um, so if you want to embed a Twitter feed, um, you might, uh, well, you can do it like this. So you just click on the add content and there will be this embed Twitter timeline little widget thing that pops up. And um, as I say, we obviously, because this is a live service, have got credentials in the system, so it will uh, connect. Okay, and this is just an example uh, Twitter feed which you can use, and uh, I'll leave that box blank, and it'll give you uh, um, the, the default height. So uh, it's quite simple. You just put a, a Twitter username in, and there you get a little Twitter feed looking. So I guess if I was, let me edit that and make the um, make the display a bit a bit bigger uh, so you can see it better so uh, yeah so there you go and you know what might happen I always get a bit confused about this but um, if you uh, you might want the Twitter feed over on the left hand side of the screen so you might want to break this column into three can I do that uh, let's see if I can figure out how to do it um, hey look at that yeah kind of anyway what's happened to the feed <laughs> let's reload the page see if it comes back yeah, there you go. Um, so uh, you can have your, you know, your teaching and learning content in this little window here, and then your um, your Twitter feed in the left hand side. So that, as I say, that's the only one that doesn't actually uh, work on nightly um, chunk, but it will work in Sakai 12 when you when you put it down. So unless there's any questions about that, I'll, I'll just jump over to Sakai and. Um, we'll, I have a I have a question. Go on then. Yeah. So, does that um, work with things like hashtags, or is it designed primarily? No, I forget the technical reason why it doesn't. But no, it just works with usernames. So, whenever okay. you, um, yeah, whenever you put anything in, it has to be a username. I can't really remember why it didn't work with hashtags. Uh, I did ask, and it was apparently very complicated and, or something. 
So, um, yeah, so it doesn't. No. Okay. Thanks. Uh, okay. So, um, so now we are in the wonderful looking Sakai 12. Um, uh, and um, with a nice menu menus, of course. Uh, so, um, the other things that we've got in the system, and I will. I'm going to leave the best till last, even though you might not think it's the best. Uh, I do. <laughs> uh, so uh, again, under the under the ad content, uh, you see there's no ad Twitter here. Um, but what we do have is um, there's this um, new uh, piece of content here, which is a resources folder. I'll show you what they all are in a minute. Uh, we've got embed announcements. I just jumped over embed calendar. And also embed uh, forums, uh, conversations as well. Of course, our checklist is it's fairly new, although it was in um, Sakai 11.3. So let's start with the add resources folder. Now, one of the things that people like to do a lot at Oxford, and I don't know whether this is common, but um, they like to uh, horse a load of files into resources and then just present the rather nice view of resources, like the um, the folder listing. I, I find, well, before we dive into that, let me just show you. Uh, um, so what people will often do is um, they will um, um, make a um, make a web content link out of uh, resources. Like so I'll call it documents for clarity, um, and they will they will send people off to this page. Um, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> so there's a book, and maybe it does work. Yeah. Um, so they send people off to this page, which is the the kind of nice view of um, of resources. It's looking a bit looking a bit yellow, isn't it? I'm not quite sure why it's so yellow. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to have this view, um, a nice view of resources. We wanted to have that in the lessons tool. So um, what you would do by this is by uh, going to add resources folder. It, get a little bit of dialogue and basically you can choose which is the root of the kind of folder display that you're going to show so uh, the, the simple project right is the, the top level so that if, you, if I chose that it would be all the resources but um, but going into one of these folders um, let me see let's let's just um, yeah let's, let's let's just display this folder so this is uh, I, I just uploaded a load of random files before it's been anything probably shouldn't have uploaded these uh, <laughs> anyway um, so this basically is just a listing of files in the middle of resources so you know you might have a bit of text up here you know please read these resources and then there's a folder um, listing and of course uh, people can navigate um, as well and they can go in and you can uh, have a look at my friend's Thai cookbook that his mum wrote um, only for today I'm afraid uh, not too sure why it's not displaying, but anyway. So that was one thing that we did, and uh, you know these are all PowerPoint folders, and you can, you can close things up and go to different folders, and um, there's a font there, and so on. Okay. Right. So that was the first um, thing we added. So um, not quite sure what uh, no right D Davey is asking whether um, the, the, the resources he says does the resources disclose function and lessons adhere to the student instructor permission settings I quite follow it totally but um, basically uh, you can uh, put a link to the folder here and no, I don't understand the question. <laughs> I don't know whether anyone could translate that for me, what, what Dave's asking. Not, not entirely sure. We could come back to it later if you like. Um, I think all of these things have got prerequisites on them. So you can not have the folder listing showing if the person hasn't, for example, read the previous document and so on. Um, so the, 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 the files and folders that are listed here are just basically what a student would see if they went into resources so if there's a, a hidden folder in resources which the student doesn't have permission to see then they won't see it here either um, if they're being given permissions to, to go into the hidden folder then they can if it's a um, time to release folder then obviously it won't show until the particular um, day has come when the folder is, is available so okay so right, moving on to the next one so the next one was embedding a calendar 
So I tell you what, let's just um, split this thing into the kind of do this right again. Um, so at a column break, um, I'm going to put the calendar in this right hand side box. Let's hope it appears in the right box. Let's just reset the page because occasionally things appear in the wrong box. So here uh, is a embed calendar link and that just basically sort of does um, what you get on the front page and um, inserts your your sort of site calendar. It, you, it's not as configurable, I don't think. Uh, let me see. Just, um, yeah, yeah, it's not as configurable as the um, as the regular calendar in the sense that you can't change to an agenda view or do a weekly view or whatever. But it is uh, at least it should be responsive. So when I squish things up, um, the calendar gets smaller and smaller. And so uh, one of the things we were doing here was letting people kind of right uh, be able to design their own home page. So whereas on the overview tool, you know, you get uh, the sort of calendar down here and so forth um, we were letting people um, manually construct their own home page I mean obviously the calendar would be on the other side and so on um, so we were doing some synoptic equivalents of these um, of, of these lessons components so it's just adding a calendar um, you can also add announcements you see so um, let's see a five I haven't made many announcements so where's this going to appear right uh, okay let's appear in that box brilliant <laughs> well there's a bug look <laughs> I could maybe let me uh, I get the idea let's delete this one looks so it didn't look quite so bad I must confess I haven't actually um, tested things out on uh, Sakai 12 for a while so uh, so here you can see this is very similar to what you might have on the home page of your site again it's just a, a summary of recent announcements and it does all the stuff about um, checking whether you're you know you're in the right group if it's a group um, um, restricted like announcement and so on. Now, yeah, sure. Oh, right, okay. Uh, what have we got to... Um, does the calendar tool have to be enabled for the embed to work? Yes. If there's no calendar tool, I believe you don't get the add calendar um, link in the lessons. So I'm pretty sure that's the case because we, I'm sure I tested that a while ago. Um, I can't remember whether the, um, the description um, in resources appears. Why don't we try it? Let's have a go. So um, let me just go into uh, let's go into this cooking folder and add a description um, to the cooking folder. Okay, that's the description, and I'm going to have to go back to the lessons now and. Um, Yeah, so, so, so this should appear in a box below, shouldn't it? So I'll go and let's just uh, let's choose that folder again. Um, so, uh, uh, so it does appear, but it appears as a little I. So it doesn't actually appear um, sort of written out, but you do you do see the folder. And I, I'm pretty sure that stuff like copyright and that would um, would also appear as well. So, um, I think I've covered all the questions. Yeah, right. Okay. So let's carry on. Let's delete this because it's looking ugly. Um, yeah. So when you um, click on the announcement, it will show you it. So it, um, it takes you into the announcements tool, and uh, you can go back to lessons. It will take you back. No. Okay. Um, so let's go and just just let's just delete this and um, add another component which we've added. So we also added uh, forums, um, and it's again a similar idea to um, trying to replicate the synoptic tools that you get on the front page. We haven't done them all. We haven't done messages because we don't really use messages here at Oxford, um, but we have done forums. So that should be a similar thing. I only put um, two. Um, different uh, conversational threads here and uh, they were both under the general discussion so I thought I'd talk about generals um, 
in, in the, since that's what the discussion was all about. <laughs> so again, you see, you know, it's a very similar uh, idea to um, the announcements. You just get a summary. And what we said there was that you see the um, most recent five. So if there'd been more conversations, then just the top five would be shown. You can change the number of um, posts you see. Um, I only did two. I'm afraid. And uh, so who would win in a fight between the Major General and the Rear Admiral? Uh, let me see. And, uh, um, ah, first Sea Lord would win. Who, who would have thought that, eh? Who would have thought that? So. Okay, so uh, well, I've just checked my list. Uh, so we've done announcements, done calendar, done. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, okay. So. Um, <laughs> That would be uh, another good place for any questions, if anyone had any, because the, the next little thing I was going to share isn't a sort of synoptic tool replacement. Um, but and the only question we've got is, um, how can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? Which I, I really don't have the uh, d don't have the, the answer to. Uh, I didn't know I'd made a Pirates of Pen Penzance reference, actually. Uh, Laura, so. <laughs> um, yes, you can specify the number of posts. Yeah, if you just go and edit this. So I said five. I, I fortunately I only made two uh, conversations, but um, you can su supply any number from this. So you can just fit it to however you want. So you might want, uh, for example, a really, um, you know, a really long column here full of forum posts and then um, a series of um, smaller boxes and on the left hand side. It, it depends. Um. <laughs> right, so. Uh, the next uh, feature, let's just get these things because it looks like the formatting's a bit messed up here in um, in trunk. Um, and then, um, so let's uh, seem to be able to delete these things, do I? No, yeah, never mind, anyway. Uh, that's not so good, is it? Look. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so uh, it needn't matter too much. So the next thing we did was um, trying to make uh, lessons a little bit more like resources um, in its the way it handles permissions. So we, what we we have this problem at Oxford, and I'm sure you have the same problem at other institutions, in that um, some some academics don't really um, want to bother themselves with learning about how a system works or anything like that. Um, so they want to sort of dive in there and they want to do some things quickly and then sort of get out of there without really knowing what's going on. Um, so if you want an academic to create a lessons page, you can make them, you know, an instructor on the site and then they can go in and they can make a lessons page quite happily. But the problem is they could also go and delete everybody else's lessons pages because if you're made an instructor, then you have kind of edit and therefore delete rights over all the lessons pages in the site. And unfortunately, we can't trust our um, everyone who works here to not do this, you know, not do the wrong thing. Um, people do, you know, instead of um, when they, for example, change jobs, instead of leaving a site, they just go and delete all the sites that they used, that used to be <laughs> used to be an instructor or a maintainer on. We've had that a couple of times. We've had to go and put all the sites back. So what we wanted to do was um, give people a way of um, well, I meant, uh, uh, implement a way in the lessons tool of giving people um, some pages they could edit, but not letting them delete everybody else's pages. Um, in the process. So what we could have done is we could have let them, we could have given them a student page. Um, but if you, um, I don't know that people are that familiar, but on student pages, you get a very much restricted set of things you can put on a page and that wasn't going to work. So what we wanted to do is to give them a, like a proper page, um, a, a page with all these things here um, that could be added um, with a big proviso that they can't go and delete somebody else's page. So we um, we added this thing called a, uh, it, well, it's a type of subpage. So I'm going to add a subpage. So, um, so let's call it untrustworthy person's page. Okay, so we'll give this um, person a page. Okay, and uh, so we're now in a sub page here um, and what you can do, in fact you can do this on any page actually, but I just created a sub page to make it um, more obvious. So what we're going to do is we want to give this edit rights to this page to a uh, user on the site. Um, so if you, sorry I did that a bit quick didn't I? So if you click on this little um, cog icon, which seems to be getting smaller, doesn't it? Um, the more versions of SAC we go through. Um, 
you can edit the page title or style. Maybe we should change the, um, the text there, but you can give the page an owner. And the people that will be listed down here are site members who don't have rights to up, to update the page at the moment. So um, let's, let's just to show you who's on the site. So in site info, we've got um, the uh, administrator, who is, this is a project site, by the way, who's a maintainer. And then I added these three other people. Um, I added these two students, but I thought it was slightly confusing. So this Mr. Contrib, he is the person that we don't trust not to completely delete everything on the site, but who we do want to create some um, affair of his own pages. So I'm going to go into Lessons 2, and I can go... Um, Oh, right here on that page. Um, so let's just put some content on so I don't, so I don't keep getting confused thinking the page has disappeared. Right. Uh, okay. Let's just do a little hello. Right. Uh, yeah. So we click on this little thing and we can set the owner to Mr. Contrib. Do that. So. And now this page is owned by Mr. Contrib. So if we go um, back to the top. We will see that the it's a bit like the student pages. It will say who the uh, contrib page is. And let me just um, I suppose I should have prepared this earlier, really, shouldn't I? Um, come on, window, you can do it. Um, so if we go in as Mr. Contrib, we can see um, what's going on, can't we? So. Um, Pretty sure this is what I <laughs> this is what I set the username and password to. We'll soon find out, won't we? So I'm logging in as this untrustworthy person, and then we'll jump straight to this um, uh, site, simple project site, uh, lessons two, and um, there you go. So this is um, this is my page, as it were, and now as I am logged in as Mr. Contrib, I can add all the tools that you saw before. So if this was uh, a regular student page, I forget which the things are, you probably just, is it just some of these you get? I can't really remember anyway. Um, but so this person is able to um, uh, delete stuff on their page, edit it. Well, let's just um, prove it by, um, yeah. well, prove it by, by adding something. Um, So I'm now updating my page, but if I, as this untrustworthy person, go to the top level page, look, I don't have any of the uh, edit controls. I can't destroy this page, but I can destroy my own page, which is which is very nice. Okay, um, so um, I'm just looking at the questions. Uh, you can't set more than one owner. No, it's just a one owner. I mean, we thought of um, setting ownership to a group as being phase two. Um, but uh, we uh, we don't particularly have any desire uh, for that. We're, we're happy with um, just being able to give it, um, do it like this. So we're okay, happy. Um, maintainers can edit these pages. So I know I'm a super admin, but if I was to go in here, um, uh, I could I could uh, totally mess up Mr. Untrustworthy's page if I wanted to. Um, so it's it's a bit like resources in the sense um, that uh, you know if you're a kind of maintainer on the site. You can edit everything in resources, but if you're uh, somebody who's just got the ability to edit stuff in one folder, then that's the only place you can edit them. So it, it sort of works like resources, really. If you think of it like that, it would probably be okay. Nice to see Chris Charles, sorry, is liking the option. Yeah, me too. Um, yep. Yep, and Lucy's saying access users can own a page, which they can, yes, and possibly contributors. So we do have a role called contribute at Oxford. It sits between maintain and access, and it, it is the role we design for these untrustworthy um, members of staff who, who need uh, not to have the ability to delete everybody off a site or delete the site or, you know, that sort of thing. So it's a cut down sort of safe sort of maintainer's role, and that's... Um, something that didn't, didn't quite work with lessons, which is why we did this. Um, yeah, right. So anyway, um, I think that was um, all I was going to show you on lessons. I had a couple of other things uh, to show, unless um, I've run out of time. 
Um, sh should I just do? I can do these other things in five minutes. Sure, that should yeah. be fine. You got the pad, you got the controls, so. I do. Yes, you can't get rid of me now. Right, so uh, <laughs> one thing I thought I would show you was, um, we can do it in here, I think, actually, um, is something that, which is also in Sakai 12, uh, uh, or at least it's made very easy to um, to configure in um, Sakai 12. And let me just uh, copy some, oh, oh cranky. Uh, okay, let's just copy some text from here. Uh, okay, so uh, it's this thing here. Look, did it? So I'm going to paste some text into this uh, this window, um, right? So, and this is an accessibility checker, and it is um, it's free. Um, the problem is it's got a GPL license, which means that you're not allowed to bundle it with Sakai um, to distribute it because that would mean because it's a GPL license, it would mean Sakai would have to be GPL. But it is free, it is open source, and it's very easy to um, attach it to your version of Sakai. So uh, Matthew did some wizardry with the Maven build file and you just put in the path, I think, to the accessibility tool, press build and it will all get included. Anyway, what it goes yeah, is... I've actually, I've actually tested it out on a local build and uh, it worked great. So. Yeah. so it gives you this button anyway, and basically uh, you just uh, click it and um, it, it gives you an accessibility report of all the stuff that's in there. So the sort of things it points out are um, the usual, you know, the obvious things like, oh, you've got an image here without any alt text. Oh, you've used um, bold text here instead of a heading and all that sort of thing. So it's all the box standard accessibility, um, um, you know, uh, things that people do by mistake, really, uh, and uh, obviously more advanced things. As well, but, uh, it's absolutely fantastic, really. Look at that, so clear. And uh, if I had, oh, I, I don't know whether there are any more, but uh, it will, um, no, it will uh, just, it just basically steps you through all the goofs that you might have made um, when um, constructing a page. And obviously, you know, if you provide this in your institutional um, VLE, then, you know, sort of centrally, you can kind of say, well, we've given our staff the tools to um, take accessibility seriously. You know, we've sort of done our job. So, so it's really, it's, I mean, it is really useful. And also it's really good just to be able to say, well, the, you know, the tools are there, people people need to use them. So that was the one thing I was going to show. And the second thing um, is um, Lucy, uh, Lucy Talon's little project that, that we uh, worked with her on. So she's here in the chat. I hope I won't embarrass her. <laughs> but um, we did this thing called an activity browser. This was, uh, we have these innovation projects at Oxford, which is where people have a, come up with a really good idea. And there's a small amount of funding available uh, from the central university to come up with these really good ideas. So what, um, and I talked about this before um, a little bit, but uh, what we wanted to do was, was uh, have in the VLE, in the LMS, some examples of good practice. Now we sort of started off by thinking that what we might do is have um, good good practice sites in um, in WebLearn and let people copy them. Um, but then Lucy kind of did a bit of research, a bit of thinking and realized that really, you know, stuff isn't actually used word for word. What people like to do is look at the, you know, what's being done and sort of be inspired by it and then do a similar thing. So sort of using the, uh, you know, the, 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 the site or the activity as a sort of springboard to do your own thing in a similar area. So anyway, one of the problems was that we had um, we have two two VLEs at Oxford, um, Sakai, which is the main one, and there's a small amount of people using Moodle. Um, the people who do um, sort of online learning, um, distance learning courses, use, tend to use Moodle more. So we had some resources in Moodle and some in Sakai, and we wanted to highlight both these sets of resources to um, to users. Um, uh, in order to inspire them. So we wrote this little tool and I must apologize that it is completely non-portable because uh, unfortunately at Oxford we use Solar as a search engine and everybody else in the Sakai community uses um, Elasticsearch and nearly all the coding for this is Solar specific. So if anybody wanted to do the same thing they could certainly look at our code and be inspired as to how we did it but unfortunately it is, it's just not in the slightest bit portable so it is, this is just an Oxford only thing. Very bad luck we chose Solar but um, we did it just at the same time as everybody else was choosing Elasticsearch and unfortunately nobody mentioned to us that <laughs> that um, Sakai was working on Elasticsearch until it was done. Well, it's time it was too late. Anyway, so so we've got all these, uh, we've got this sort of browser and there's lots of um, things in here. Um, and I was going to show you the, yeah, this one first. So, oh, well actually, let me, uh, I know it's showing the GI skills audit, but if I search for skills audit, um, 
then um, you get um, this little nugget pops up. If you click on it, you get more information. There may well be more than one um, uh, piece of information here. So um, you get some kind of metadata. Um, so when you create one of these um, things, uh, in order to sort of get it into the sort of activity browser, you have to put some metadata in. And Lucy was, again, very, very uh, conscientious in working out what metadata we should use. Um, uh, I can't quite remember now the details, but these sort of terms come from places. And if you click on one of these uh, links, then you would get um, all the other resources, um, all the other things that are um, uh, um, related to undergraduates. So it's kind of faceted searching. Anyway, let's go back to the last. Let's go into it. Um, so this tells you all about the, mater the material. And if you're uh, interested, uh, you can click on view. And in this case, I'm pretty sure it, yeah, it takes you to a Sakai site with an embedded survey. And so this is, you know, if you want to do a skills audit for somebody, um, GIS um, skills audit, then these are some really good survey questions and you can you can use whichever ones you want and so on and so forth. Um, and just to show you an example of, um, I'll go back to the front page, I was going to get lost for a second there, wasn't I? Uh, show you an example of something that's in a different system. Let's search for, I think, stats would do it. Um, okay, so here's um, a little activity to do with using R and looking at ecology stats. So let's click into it, find out a bit more information. Again, similar kind of metadata. If we want to look at it, look and hold, we will see that this is actually um, a learning activity hosted in a Moodle. Um, and obviously, um, well, not obviously, but it's using um, IMS LTI to do the authentication. So it's all done behind the scenes. So actually, you know, you if you have, um, we had several different learning management systems at Oxford, they could all be part of this activity browser and the LTI would just, um, you know, take you into whichever system it was that was hosting the, um, the, the nuggets. So... Um, that was it. Uh, I'll just go back to the front page so you yeah, can good, see. Good time to wrap up, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay. So there's a, there's a load of um, learning, um, load of things in here. Look, five pages at least. Okay. Right. Sorry. Thanks for giving me your time. And uh, just let's see if there's any questions. Um, people are mainly discussing um, the lessons. So. Okay, well, so shall I um, shut up now and yeah. <laughs> let somebody <Okay>. else get <laughs> that word in? Uh, <laughs> All right, thank, thanks yeah, for your time, good everybody. Timing. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I mean, are there any final questions for Adam or uh, comments? So, uh, okay, well, great. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. Laura, do you think there would be enough time? Could you do your... Uh, could you do your... Um, showing of the uh, Notre Dame gradebook feature really quickly, or uh, do you think sure. you need more time at a future? Sure, I can. All right. I'll just, I'll just stop, I'll stop yeah, screen I'll stop, screen I'll stop yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah. I'll stop your sharing and let's see. Neil, if you have, do you have screen sharing? I can walk you through it so we don't have to take the time for me to download the little file and all that. Well, I'll, I'll, have, to, well, I'll, I'll have to download it. One of us will. So. Oh, okay. So I can go ahead and do it. All right. Whoops, there we go. And then, yeah, if you can make it short so we can just have a final wrap up uh, and just discuss uh, future meetings, that sort of thing. We always like a little bit of that administrative time at the end. The longest part will be this crazy download it does. Okay, well, while it's doing that crazy download, maybe we can take advantage of the time and uh, just mention that the uh, uh, we've had a couple of sessions on the uh, Jirapalooza, and the suggestion was that we use this time slot um, to do future Jirapaloozas. Uh, in other words, we could like if we don't have a meeting scheduled for a Perio Teaching and Learning, for example, we potentially could do it uh, Jirapalooza or and or on an off week. So we're thinking we might we might do more of those Jirapalooza things. Uh, it seemed like I got positive feedback. Um, none scheduled to the moment, but potentially we could. Uh, April 9th, let's say, well, actually the next uh, op meeting, which is open is May 17th. Um, there's nothing scheduled for there, so that's a potential for a Jirapalooza. Uh, June 7th, of course, is open at Perio. So um, we will be canceling the meeting of that week so just uh opening the floor just uh while laura's getting her, her screen, loaded. screen loaded um 
it booted me out and I no longer have presenter mode. Oh, well, why don't I take when I why don't I do it and then you can walk me through it. Yeah, you no longer sure. do have presenter mode. That's really weird. Um, the Jeerpaloozas are not being recorded, Charles, and I think that was intentional. We actually asked uh, asked the group if they want it recorded, but we might have some really, uh, you know, uh, they wanted to have more freedom in terms of the types of discussion and input and not have to feel like they're being recorded for posterity because they might people might change their opinion, uh, things like that. So, um, all right, thanks, Laura. Let me go ahead and... Get Fortunately, I used the site in a trunk um, SQL that Neil has marked as NCADEN test. So it's all set up with um, data for us. Oh, you used one of my sites, eh? Hey? I did. It was better than punching you. Hmm. Neil and I have an ongoing joke about me punching him. I come up to him and just give him a light tap in his arm, and he freaks out as though I've just caused hemorrhages. Let's see here. Okay, so we're going to Trunk Nightly site. All right. Nightly. And we're doing so what trunk. I've done here is uh, added some folks as... Um, as students to his site. And who should I log and in as? Uh, uh, you can log in as yourself. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Administrator is who you usually log in as, right? The no, owner usually, of the no, meal. I usually don't okay. log in as administrator, but it appears like, oh, right, because my account obviously is gone, so, because uh, it gets wiped every night. All right. Administrator, uh, and then there's the Neil site under home. That must be getting automatically uploaded. All right. Yeah. So in the new grade book, I've uh, gone ahead and added students to this site. They get wiped out every day, and then I've given them 14 grade items here. Um, not all of them are graded. I think I've graded three. But the new feature that Notre Dame is working on, and some of you have participated with us on uh, the listserv in figuring this out, has to do with the use case where faculty want to curve, but they don't see their curve. So if we go to grade settings, um, we've added a new kind of grading schema, which is called grade points. Um, and so in the drop down, you'll see grade points. And since, um, since an A is always four points in this grade point system, and I, I, that's the assumption I'm working on, is that this is not just a US point system, but it's a everybody point system. And so those letter grades are always associated with that number of points. And as we all know, the um, the calculation for a student's grade point average has to do with uh, determining what the um, what the value of the course is, how many credits you're offering for that course for the term or the semester, whatever you run on. <clears throat> and then what you do is you, you um, add up all of the students' grades and um, divide by how many grades there are, and then I think you multiply again by the number of, of um, points uh, that you're offering for each of the classes. However, this is intended to show you the grade points that are the average for the course. So we wanted to put a distribution. And I think the reason that the chart doesn't show up right next to the grade schema here is that your screen is too small. So if you scroll down further, you'll see a distribution chart. It shows you the course grade distribution. So we have number of students, which should be running along the bottom, not the top. Um, and I and I need to make make those kind of um, suggestions to development right now. Uh, we wanted to go A to F, and right now by changing to grade points, Neil is displaying. Um, he should be displaying not just the letter but the grade point value as well, so that you can see the distribution. 
Horizontal bars were thought to be better than vertical bars because um, do you want to go from zero to 100 as in points or percent, of which are grade scales available to you, or do you want to go to A to F, or it doesn't make sense left to right as much as it does up to down. And, um, and then the first uh, stat there, the average grade, um, needs to needs to change to be the, um, the course GPA so that you can see where you are and this is the really keen part uh, is if you go back to your grade scale and ostensibly they're supposed to be displayed next to each other and you change a value there and save your chart will refresh to show you that now that an A is worth an A minus is worth um, so many different points, um, so many more students will be getting that. Uh-oh. Live so, demos are always a risky thing. They, cer they certainly are. But anyway, we're working hard to get this um, in a position where it can go into uh, a release such as 11.5 or, or probably 12. I'm one of these overly optimistic people, but hopefully 12. And I wanted uh, teaching and learning's feedback about how many of you have faculty who go in at the end of the course period and then uh, want to change their grade schema to match some kind of a curve. And yes, it does work with other grade schemas. The chart redraws and, and we'd like the chart X and Y uh, axes to reflect whichever schema you, you chose. So if you choose letter grade, you'll see letter grades. If you choose grade points, you'll see the letters and the grade points. If you choose uh, percentages and so forth, yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously it's a work in progress, but it's getting very close to the end. And I wanted to make sure we were on the right track, especially with the horizontal bars. Uh, is that going to help faculty who are used to seeing distributions or histograms on vertical bars? Will they be thrown by that? Um, or will it throw them if on some grade schemes it goes left to right and that's what would happen if we had vertical bars. It would go left to right 0 to 100 or 0 being F and A being on the far right where most of us use left to right alphabets and expect the A to be on the left. Now, did that make sense? That's a hard concept to explain. And we probably need to, to wrap up, Laura, um, but we can take a couple more seconds and um, feedback here. Okay. No, so, no faculty yeah. curves. Okay. Thank you, Neil. Sure. And, and feel free to contact Laura off outside of this meeting also if you have other ideas. I assume that's okay, Laura, right? Absolutely. So if you have other ideas or, or feedback, and you're welcome to continue to put them in chat as well um, until we wrap up. Um, so Charles thinks that he has some faculty that, that thought, might find that nice um, at Rutgers, I believe, right? Or is that? Uh... In any case, Illinois State. Sorry about that. Illinois State. All right. Uh, so. You know, just again to wrap up, I, I hope you've had a couple minutes. Also, I know there's a lot of information on this particular uh, particular episode of the uh, teaching and learning call. But curious if anyone's come up with any ideas for future meetings, either things you would like to present or things you would like to see. Uh, and it could be Sakai level or Aperio level or some other Aperio project. I know we have a, a pretty, I think, tight, hard skew towards uh, Sakai on this particular call. Um, but any any thoughts about future uh, things to either, again, they don't have to be presentations. They can also be open discussions, roundtables, those sort of things. And of course, if we don't, that that's OK, too. We can always have the time open until we have uh, topics. And we might come up with some things around, um, you know, from the Open Aperio meeting. One thing that, that just occurred to me right now that that I know there's some interest in the community. Oh, and I, before, before the meeting ends, I want to also thank uh, you know, thank uh, Adam for presenting and thank uh, Laura also for presenting. Uh, that was really great. And I see some people are dropping off. 
But um, there's Steerpalooza. I was also thinking next generation digital learning environment. Um, that there seems like there's a lot of interest in discussing what that actually means for Sakai. So that seems like a possibility of a future discussion we could have. I'm not sure how we would structure that, but uh, um, I'm curious uh, just on this particular group, the people who are on, um, what your reaction is to that idea of having a, an open discussion on the next generation digital learning environment. The way, the, yeah, I have, I'm starting to get some ideas of how we might structure it, but, but just as an open, Thing. So Dave said, "I'd like to hear more about NGDLE." Um, yeah, Dave, I'm not. I'm. I'm not sure. It's. It's. Uh, I guess you're sure. Maybe you hear more about NGDLE at the uh, at the conference, and that might stimulate some ideas. That might be a good way to do it. And in fact, if we have a roundtable on next generation digital learning environment, it might be good to have five or ten minutes or more or a roundtable of some presentations of what NGDLE could mean to different people. And then that might stimulate some discussion. Uh, so, and then over time, maybe get to the Sakai part of it. Okay, thank you, Providence College. And oh, Wilma mentions there is a, actually one was leading an NGDLE uh, Birds of a Feather at Open Imperio, so be looking at that. So there's some presentations on NGDLE, and there's a Birds of a Feather. So that would be a great way to kick off the discussion, and maybe uh, we could leverage um, meetings uh, here to uh, to follow on. So just an idea there. All right, well, if anyone else has additional ideas, please feel free to let me or Trisha Gordon or Matt Burr just know uh, so we can continue to schedule a great lineup of episodes of Aperio Teaching and Learning. Um, thank you all. Uh, any final comments or urgent issues? Uh, so I just got a virtual punch from Laura, but a friendly one. Um, okay, thank you all. I'm going to stop the recording now, and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.